Welcome guys, welcome to my live from my kitchen where I share with you how, to, how I prepare my family's Sunday meal. I am your Diva Chef Small Walker Barrett. So welcome to everybody on Instagram and welcome to our viewers on Facebook. This evening on the menu, I am going to be making the following dishes. So for our entree, I'm going to be making a barbecue lobster. It's lobster season. So I'll be making a barbecue lobster and that is going to get served up with some grilled cabbage, uh, seasoned up with just some adobo and maybe a little vinegar just to give it some freshness. And then for the starch in the meal, I'll be making a sweet potato cheddar croquette. And as I go along, I will explain what that is. And then finally, for dessert, I'll be making a cookie. This cookie is called a thumbprint cookie. And it's called that just because you, you literally put your thumb um, into the dough to make an indention to put like the jams and so on. So you'll see how that is done. And I thank you so much for joining. So let's begin and we're going to be starting with a cookie you always want to start with a dish that takes the longest so in this container i have butter and sugar and all i did was to just soften it and then now i'm going to be adding just a little bit of vanilla for flavor and an egg okay i want to just break the egg into a container to make sure it is fresh bless and it is bless chelsea says hello chef hello bless chelso chelso clever i didn't hear someone looking forward to another wonderful evening thank you so much guys for tuning in uh let me know where you're watching from so i can give you a shout out and also share the live with your friends maybe they want to see chef walker book barrett cook, cook from her kitchen also for those of you who are new I ask you to go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's called Next in Food. This is what it looks like. So for the people on Facebook, the Next in Food, this is the spelling. And for friends over there on Instagram, this is what it looks like. So just go over to YouTube, type Next in Food in, and, per, and just click on the subscription button. We have Chef Yard. Chef Yard says hey street for such events he's also from four west greater Hope more Hope more is in the house welcome welcome and for those of you who are wondering where to find me other than on the live you could uh, follow my business page it's called street food saturdays on instagram and also on facebook and all we i'm also on facebook at as Simone Walker Barrett and on Instagram as Next in Food. So for those who are just joining, welcome. In this container, I have one stick of butter, one third cup of sugar, and some vanilla, and I just added an egg, and we're making cookie. Now cookie is a high fat product. It's a treat. It's something that we don't make a whole lot in Jamaica. So hopefully after today, you can start making cookies with your families. The kids love cookies. And there are, there are five ways of making cookies in terms of the makeup. And this one that I'm doing today is the creaming method. And so a creaming method is when you mix flour and, I mean, mix sugar and butter together until it is fluffy and usually it has an egg in it. So this is what our cream, butter, sugar, and egg mixture looks like. And I'm doing this by hand just because I wanna show you how simple it is for you to replicate this at home. And then I'm going to be adding in my flour in two parts. So I'm literally using one and three quarter cups of flour. Usually when you're making a cookie, you don't add liquid to it in terms of like milk or juice. You don't add any extra liquid. We allow just the fat and the sugar to, 
to do its job in the oven. Kerry K is from Clarendon, Jamaica. Hi, Kerry K. Pauline White, good evening, my favorite Viva chef. Thank you so much, Pauline, for joining. Share the live, guys. I ask you to share. Let somebody else know that I'm on so that they too can watch. Carrie and Hardy, you're looking beautiful, my friend. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Carrie. Cheryl, All right. Cheryl Jenkins says hi. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome. Where are you guys watching from? Carrie and Hardy is in New York. New York is in the building. Nishika Brown Morris, a hey, hunty. Hey, we know Nishika. You throw, we know you throw down. Hey, girl. Welcome. Okay, guys, so this is our cookie. You see how fast that was? Very, 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 very simple. Okay, so I'm just going to change the wooden spoon back to the spatula. As I always said, when you're cooking, you want to have everything ready. And so I have my cookie tray ready and waiting. And we're going to be making small cookies today. So I need a scoop, a small scoop, to just portion the cookies out. Deirdre Woodley is watching from St. Vincent. Welcome St. Vincent in the building, well, in my kitchen. Bless Chelsea is watching from Mandeville. Mandeville, welcome, bless Chelsea. I'm using a one ounce portion scoop. I like, when I'm baking, I like exactness. So I like to, I like to measure. That allows everything to bake at the same time so if you don't have one of these next time you go to the grocery store just walk up the kitchen aisle and pick yourself up a few kitchen gadgets that you can use these things are usually very inexpensive Pauline White watching from Kingston Hi Pauline, Kingston, Kingston is in, welcome guys. Nikisha Brown, Nishika Brown Mars in Texas. Texas is here also, welcome. Okay, so let's go to the fun part of these thumbprint cookies. So they're literally called thumbprints because you use your thumb to make an indention into the dough. So what I do to prevent it from sticking is actually just put my thumb in a little water and you're just gonna make an indention just like so. The indention is, is just to give you a little space to put the jam. So you take your thumb and you go like so. See that guys? How simple is that? Let's just carry this one a little bit more to give this one some more space. Now when you're working with cookies, you wanna put it in the oven as fast as possible. Okay, so I have all of my foodie friends would have remembered the episode where we make the Ota Eti Apple Jam. And I'm gonna be filling my cookies with Ota Eti Apple Jam that was made a couple weeks ago. You guys remember that? I also have a banana jam that I made a couple weeks ago also. This was used in the banana cream pie that we made in a jar. I don't know if you guys remember these things, but yes, so when you make a preserve, you can have it for many, 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 different use and that's what we're doing with these preserve that was done weeks ago and then I have my favorite little store-bought jam this is guava so I'm going to be putting some guava in so the idea here is to use whatever jam you have whatever jam you like I'm using three because I have three different flavors in my fridge you could use one all right and so now we have an assortment of jam in the cookies and these are basically what the thumbprint cookies look like i'm going to put these in at 375 and you're going to be taking about 12 to 15 minutes to bake 
So please remind me that they're in the oven, guys. This is what they look like. It's for those of you guys on Facebook. And for you guys over there on Instagram, this is the thumbprint cookies. We're going in the oven. Kemar, hello. Teach up a million do you what love with passion. Hey Kemar. Welcome. So I'm gonna actually set my oven. So you guys remind me, alright? So Stacy A Sim, K Rock Watch and K Rock Sister. Hey Stacy, welcome. Her Chester is in my kitchen this evening. And for those who are just joining, we're making cookies for dessert and lobster for our main course. Okay. G, G Authentic. Bless up my favorite lecturer for music, Gavin Smith. Thank you, Gavin. So now we are going to move on to our sweet potato croquettes a croquette is usually made with meat or starch and usually you bind it together with a thick bechamel sauce so today i'm making this one with a combination of sweet potato that was boiled and mashed i added cheddar cheese to it and i also added some carrot and then for flavor I added nutmeg and melted butter. All right, guys, so it's very, very, very simple. So just wanna show you another way in which you could use up, you know, these stuff that are available to us. So I'm gonna just shape them kind of like uh, a log. All right, so we wanna take about two ounces you can make them round, but I want to make them in a log this evening. Don't overwork them. It's starch. Remember last week I showed you how to work with the plantain. You could put some oil on your hand. These will not stick to my hand because I added some melted butter in. This is something that we make a lot, especially for the first year culinary students at my job at the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management at the University of Technology. Uh, so you guys, if you're watching, you will be very familiar with the croquettes, especially in your first intro to food prep class or your culinary one class. So any starch can be used to make a croquette. Uh, today I'm using sweet potato. You could use yam. We also have a recipe that we use yellow yam. You can use cassava, dasheen. You could use leftover rice. You could do a combination of rice and meat. You could do seafood and it goes on and on. So anybody who's just joining, I want to say welcome. On the stove, we have some stuff preheating. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just pause for a moment with the croquette, the making up of the croquette, and go over to the stove and we're going to start grilling our cabbage. I'm gonna grill the cabbage before I get the lobsters on because once the lobsters go on, we're gonna be basting it with a barbecue sauce and I don't want to have to wash the grill. So come with me to the stove, guys, and we're going to put the cabbage to grill on the griddle on top of the stove. Jesse Chambers asking, can you use the other sweet potatoes also? Yes, so if you're living abroad and you can't find the Jamaican type sweet potatoes, you could use what they refer to as yams in America. Those sweet, those sweet potato yams that they call it, um, those are fine to use. Come with me to the stove, guys. So, Ashila, you're gonna just bring the entire set on power.
everybody see what we're doing? Okay, so the exhaust is on. So in this container, I have some carrots. All I did was to add just a little oil on them and just gonna toss them around. You want to lubricate them. And this is Roman Jackson. Hi, someone. Good evening. What? I'm watching. What are you cooking this evening? Good evening, my mother. I am making barbecue lobster with grilled vegetables and sweet potato croquettes. I'm also making a cookie. The cookie is already in the oven. JC Chambers says thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so our cabbage and carrot is on. And what I like to do is season them after I take them off the grill. That way I don't have many burnt pieces on the grill. So what I'm encouraging you guys to do is grill and roast the vegetables sometimes. You don't have to always boil or steam them. We did an episode of me grilling vegetables already. It's actually my favorite way to have cabbage is to actually roast it. And you see how quickly we start to get the grill marks. So these go very, 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 very fast. B underscore my name show. I can smell the flavors. For real. Okay, so. Nicola Bless says, hey Sim. Hey Nick, thanks for joining. So in this pot, I have some oil on, on low, and that's gonna fry our croquettes. So as soon as I put the lobsters on, I'm gonna be putting the croquettes in. So we want these to get a little bit more color. So for those who are just joining again, welcome. No vegetables, all vegetables have sugars in them. All right, and these, the natural sugars in the vegetables causes it to caramelize, meaning to get brown. So you have to watch it. If you look at the, ca the cabbage, seeds start getting brown already. And so it just means that everything is cooking and that is a very, very, very good sign. I'm gonna flip these over. See, we have some nice brown color on both of them. So this little thing, I'm an advocate for it in your stove, in the middle of your stove. Feel free to use it up more often. You can grill your vegetables on it. You can cook meat on it. We're gonna be barbecuing our lobsters on it this evening. All right guys, so how fast was that? Literally in less than five minutes, our vegetables are almost ready. So while our vegetables hang out there, I'm gonna go get our lobsters. JC Chambers, I like that grill idea. Looking so delicious. So I'm actually grilling on low because the kitchen is hot. So if you grill it on high, it just goes faster. When you put it on low, it's a little bit um, slower but more manageable. So you can decide how fast or slow you want to go. So let's look at our lobster that we'll be grilling in the meantime. So in this platter I have it's lobster season guys so you can go out and get lobsters this is lobsters shell on so all I did was to clean it up and cut it in two and then I also have some 
that I took it out of the shell. All right, so I'm actually grilling each, each stick represents um, half of a lobster tail. So this is one lobster, two, three, four lobsters. Remember, I always say it's four of us for the guys on Instagram. So we have the lobster tail cut in two and we put it on a stick. And we're going to be barbecuing these lobsters right here on this griddle. Our cookies in the oven, so that's going to be ready soon. Just giving our cabbage another little turn. Patricia Brown, hi Sim Sim, watching from New York. Hello, my sis. Welcome. Chef Andre Davis. Sim, you know a lot of people don't know what that part of the stove is for. Yes, Andre, that's why I'm sharing. This part is a griddle. It has the two burners on. So all my loyal students that watch on a Sunday evening, by now you all know what this is for. Okay, so always have everything ready when you're cooking. And I like to clean as I go. So guys, think about what you cook for your family and you wanna prepare it so that the cooking part of it is not stressful, it will just flow. So these carrots are ready, so I'm gonna take them off. See, we have little grill marks on them, that's what we're looking for. Take them out. And this is a nice way to have your carrots, very inexpensive, and also the cabbage. It's amazing the flavors that cabbage takes on when you grill them. Absolutely amazing. So I'm just going to let the cabbage hang out a little bit more on the grill. These could also be done outside if you have like a drum pan. But the lesson tonight is to encourage you once more to use the griddle that comes on top of many of your stoves. Okay, 12 minutes on the cooking set. Thank you, Kay. I'm just gonna run over and look at the cookies. But before I go, let's get some lobster on. So I'm putting the shell side down. Now, when you're making seafood, guys, seafood cooks very, quickly and it's overcooked even faster so this is a little trick you want to put the shell side down it gives you some insurance to not overcook it okay so i'm going to go look at the cookies i soon come back with you guys our cookies are looking nice they're not quite ready so okay uh, i think we're going to let them stay for 15 minutes so three minutes more trying to gauge this stove here. I want to make it a little bit hotter for the um, for the lobster. So guys, do you have any questions? outside of the shell. All I do is put a little adobo on it. I love adobo. It has dried onions and garlic and herbs and salt and it's the same flavor I put on the vegetables. So when you're grilling you want to just kind of lubricate stuff. Put a little fat, not too much. 
and just make sure everything is seasoned. See that? And I'm putting everything on. Any questions? Questions being asked? Did you cut and season the lobster and yeah? Yes, the lobster was seasoned with adobo. This. Shalaki is my friend. Hello, Chef. Hello, Shalaki. How are you? All right, so we're going to let the lobster stay over here and get happy while I go back to making the croquette. Trudy and Riley. Hi, Diva Chef. Okay, Trudy. Welcome. Welcome. Let me just gauge these so that it goes a little bit slower. That will give me some time to sort out the croquettes. Avis Williams for trying to chef Andre about the griddle. I use it for pancakes and burgers. Okay, great. Yes. Most persons that use it seem to just use it for that, but you can make other stuff that will cook quickly on it also. Avi and Lily, no man, I'm coming to the chef pan for mine. Hey Lily, you know you're welcome, right? Let me know where you guys are watching from. And remember now to share the live. For those who are new, if you have not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, I ask you to take a few seconds to do so. So it's next in food on YouTube. Let me just move my little handy dandy plastic bowl off this thing here before it burn it up. Okay, 15 minutes on the cookie. All right, Kay, you're on it. Thank you so much. Cookies are Jesse Chamber watching done. from Miami. Welcome, Miami. Shana K. Smith replied to Chef Angel Gilles Chambers that she's guilty. Okay, guys, these are the cookies. They're done. This is what they look like. Nice and rustic and delicious. So we're just going to let them cool. And then we are going to display them shortly. Okay. Did you, did you season the vegetables after doing? Yes, I did. But we still have a few more seasonings to put on it. So when I'm plating it off, I'll put the remaining season. Avian so, Lily is watching from Massachusetts. Welcome Avian. Maureen Cherry Berry Thomas. Dover set me in the house. Hey Chef, good evening. Good evening and welcome. That's Tony. You need to write a, write a recipe book. I will eventually. I need. I have all the recipes I need. A publisher. I need. I need to publish a book. That's what I need to do. The man himself, along with Nam Namala, sorry for mispronunciation, says it looks delicious and smells good. <laughs> oh great! You have smell a bit on or smell it on. It does smell absolutely amazing. Best chance. Says your cookie. Says your cookie looks good. Thank you, the cookie is ready. Avis Williams watching from Jam Down. Chef Andre Davis, Ultra Race Jamaica. Karen already says looking delicious. Who is watching from where? Avis Williams from Jam Down. Of Chef course, Andre John. Davis, Orchard Race, Jamaica. Thank you, Chef, for tuning in. And so we have Oshi Farin in the building, in my kitchen. Tony, how long should lobster remain on the grill? All right, so the lobsters, the ones in the shell, are going to take roughly 15 minutes. 
The ones on the stick will take, I'm going to give them about five minutes per side because they're pretty thick. These lobsters weigh two pounds. So these are really big lobsters. So they will take a little while. They'll take 15 minutes to 20 minutes to cook. Jaxie's 4D phones have so many capabilities. Smells yummy. I know, right? Roxy. Well, white. Sorry. Roxy, will you be putting barbecue sauce on lobster? I sure will. Paul in white is sumptuous cookies. Thank you, Pauline. Okay, very Allen. Use the campus publisher for those authentic recipes of yours. They are awesome. Watching from England. All right, I will take that into consideration. Um, so I'm just adding a little fat because you know my lobsters were frozen, so they're releasing lots and lots of water. Avian Lily, Chef, your son is very far away, not here in the dairy. Avian, you know me too good. I was far away. I run to the storeroom to pick up this particular thing here. Oh, you're back now. You're even better. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're turning the lobsters on the stick. All right. How do we know when they're cooking? I want you to take a closer look. You see the protein, we call it the abdomen. It's just like the protein that is in an egg white. You see it starts to coagulate. So you know that cooking is taking place. So now, come actually, come and hold the Instagram camera properly so that I can see. Now is a good time to start putting on the barbecue sauce. You don't want to wait until everything is fully cooked. To get the barbecue sauce on it and by the way i am using the bar the street food sachet sauce so this is a combination of our red red sauce along with guava so this is going to be absolutely lit time for us to flip these big Lobsters here, the ones in the shell. They're easier to manage in the shell, guys, and they won't overcook on you in the shell. So don't worry. Uh, at this point, I also want to put some butter on it because butter and lobster goes very well together. But let me clean up. Where can I purchase sauces? You buy them directly from me here at Street Food Saturdays. You can send us a message on 414-0016 or direct message on Instagram. Tell us where you are in Kingston and we will deliver it to you. JC Chambers, can you please repeat the name of the sauce you of the sauce? Do you sell it? Yes, I do sell the sauce. This is what it looks like. This is the Sweet Food Saturday's Red Rage sauce. Do you guys see it? So I also have a guava, and this one we call Red Rage. So I mix both of them together to make the barbecue sauce tonight. That's all it is. This is what it looks like. All right now, so coming in strong with the butter, just putting a little butter on. Jesse Chambers, do you ship overseas? We love the guava. Oh no, I haven't started shipping yet, but I could. It's not very hard to to be a sell of something these days. All right. Can I taste my food? All these years I have that flat part on my stove and didn't know I could grill on it. I just rested the taste on it while cooking. 
Sorry, sorry you're, idea. you're a bad girl, Shauna. Okay, so get some butter on here as well in the corner. Yeah, ma'am. I need the menu early in the week so I can cook with something while you are cooking. Alright, point taken. I'll think about it. Louis Armin Jackson Walker, yummy yummy. I would eat some now. I'm still here guys, I'm just getting some water. It's hot. Okay, so those lobsters on the stick, they're gonna come off now. They're ready. Tony, okay, I will send a message on WhatsApp pertaining to the sauces. No problem. Okay, so our barbecue lobsters are ready. Just gonna put some extra sauce on the plate. Clean the plate up. Just on the day we're trying to show my Michael. You have been missing out on a lot of things. Hope you start using it soon. Putting these on the platter. See that, guys? Lobster is done and done. Turn these over. Put the barbecue sauce on them. Then it's time to serve up those as well. So we had a butter on the shell. Gonna get some butter on the flesh of the lobster as well. And of course, some barbecue sauce. Son of case, Michael. Proper good in a go on to you know. <laughs> yes, smoke and char and flavor. So guys, if you're going to try this, try it in the shell. It's easier to manage in the shell. Just cut the lobster in two. And I'm turn it back over to get the caramelization going on the barbecue sauce. And then we're going to take it off. Cherry and Hardy is wow. Cherry and Hardy is sell off. Okay guys, so we have our fish platter all. Look at that. Barbecue lobster. Let's give it one more little bit and see what happens. So I turn the fire off. I'm just gonna let it hang out on the shell side. As I said, these are two pound lobsters. They take a little while to cook in the shell, especially when you're doing the grilling. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to head on back over and finish up the croquette and then we're going to come back over here and plate up our lobster in the shell. So, Avis Williams, can the sauce be used on any meat or is yes. it specifically for seafood? I can't yes. have seafood because I'm allergic. The sauce can be used on any meat or vegetables, my dear. Any meat or vegetables. Chef Andre Davis, what about the croquettes? Okay, Andre, we're going to be breading them now. So we're coming back over to center stage to get those done. So let's go, guys. Go back on to center stage. So the croquettes, they're made up, you can see that. In this container, I have my beaten eggs. I like to season the eggs for this one. So I just added in some cayenne and some um, all-purpose seasoning. 
So we have flour, egg wash, and breadcrumb. So I already rolled them in the flour when I was missing in and out of the lobster scene. So now we're going to put them into the egg wash. I'm trying to do about three at a time just to make it go faster. Carrie, after watching all the building, my imagination is wild with, with the flavors. Hashtag hungry. Oh, thank you guys for watching. And this is how I like to do it. Just kind of shake it around so I don't get my hand in there too much. Right. Avis Williams, thank you. Where can I find them? Referring to the sauces. The sauces are sold directly from me. Um, so you can find them when you come to Street Food Saturdays on the last Saturday of every month. Or you can buy them directly from us. Via, um, you could order them on the telephone on 414-0016 or you can send us a message on Instagram or Facebook and then we will, if you're in Kingston, we will deliver it to you or you could meet us halfway. So we can work something out as it relates to delivery. Patricia Brown, looking delicious sis. Thank you. Shana Case Michael, I'm going to need that sauce. Where do I sign up? Right here, Shana. Right here. Street Food Saturday's Picnic Sauces. We have three flavors. We have a Red Rage. That is our hot pepper sauce. This is not like killing the palate with pepper. And we have a guava sauce. And those are the two that we combine this evening to make our barbecue sauce for our lobster. So the croquettes are almost ready for the oil. Just one more to go. Kenisha Walker, hi sis, my husband and I are at Rai watching you all cheers. Hello Kenisha, welcome. Mr. and Mrs. Wallace. So we have another person from Ocherius watching. I like to just go over and roll them again just to make sure that they look nice enough. Okay, planning to post the croquettes recipe on the channel? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right, it's time to go to the oil with these, but before I go, let's do a little cleaning up. Well, you have to clean as you go along. Clever Allen, is Panko the best bread comes to use for these? Yes, I... I love using a pan for breadcrumb. I'm going to flip the board over and use a clean side to cut our vegetables. Pan for breadcrumb is actually a, a Japanese style breadcrumb. The bread is baked just for breadcrumb and they use a machine with a special blade to cut it. And so that is why it doesn't really look like crumbs but more like flakes. So it works very, very, very well. So Shana, we're gonna go back to the stove, guys. Come. Shana K. Spanker, what's in the croquettes again? Please, I missed it. Oh, in the croquettes, we have a sweet potato with some great, freshly grated carrots and cheddar cheese and just a little bit of nutmeg because nutmeg and sweet potatoes go so well together. So now, 
time to fry the croquettes. But before we do that, let's remove these lobsters. Put them out the way. Hashtag more water in. Thank you, Serena. I'm still here, guys, just trying to clean up for the frying of the croquettes. All right, so we're gonna bring the stove closer. And you must have your oil on low so that it's nice and hot and ready for you when you're ready for it. You also want to have what you'll be putting it in and removing it from the oil wick. So I usually have a slotted spoon and a serving tongue ready to help me to remove the product from the oil. And of course, some kind of a board. I should have passed that board that looks like a chocolate for me to put it on. So let's get frying. So let's test the oil. And that's what we want. Nice and hot. See those bubbles? See how tight they are? That is telling us that our oil is hot. Don't want to crawl the pot. So we're going to fry, how much is that? Four. That's five, right. We're gonna fry five at a time. Okay. So the croquettes are good as you could have them as an hors d'oeuvre, or you can have them as part of the main meal like we're doing this evening. So, I'm using sweet potatoes. You could use Irish potato, as I said earlier. Just about any starch is, is um, fine to use with these. Get some absorbent paper ready them on paper ready board is ready and we're just waiting so everything in the croquette is cooked is just to get some crispness on the outside of it so last week we fry and we spoke about frying some of the do's and the don'ts of frying. You want to make sure the oil is hot when you're frying anything. Okay, you want to make sure the temperature is right. Because if it is not hot enough when you put the food in, the, the starchy food will absorb the oil and we don't want that to happen so we want to make sure and you see what's happening here you see that big burst it's that telling me like a big piece of cheese was in this one and it just oozes out a while ago burst open i'm going to take this out and you're going to allow the oil to come back up the temperature before the rest is added. Because even though you start with a hot oil, once you start adding product to the oil, the temperature of the oil is going to drop by about 10, 15%. So that is one of the reasons to not to overcrowd the pot. And after each addition to the pot, you want to Basically allow the oil to come right back up to temperature before you add more stuff in very important So these are crisp on the outside and nice and tender on the inside 
Okay, I think our oil is ready again. We're gonna add some more. See that? That's what we want. Perfect. Sean, oh my God, cheese. These are real cooking bowls. Sean, you love cheese. I should remember to pay attention when to share the live, so that save the live. I'm still here, guys. Still here. Still here. Sharon Sharif White, the sweet potato croquettes is what I want. Okay, Sharon. This recipe will be posted on the YouTube channel for you guys to make along for your family. Sharon, I do love cheese. Right, so Sean, we're using cheddar tonight. You could use pepper jack, you could use brie, you could use parmesan, or a combination of different cheeses for this. Avi and Lily, let me know if any house beside you renting or selling. I need to be your neighbor. <laughs> because I know for a fact I wouldn't cook Sunday dinner, but just as it. Yes, Avian, you know that. That is so. Babe, Toya, just join me. What's cooking? What are we cooking? Toya, you're late for class. So we're doing barbecue lobster with Sweet potato cheddar croquettes that are now in the pot fried and grilled cabbage and carrot. So we're doing grilled vegetables. And for dessert, we did a thumbprint cookie that we're going to be placing off shortly. So welcome Toya, even though you're late, thank you for joining. Babe Toya, I am sorry Chef, I am on now. Welcome. All right guys, so we're gonna go back to center stage and I'm gonna put the meal together for you guys to see. Okay, so Facebook people, Princess CC, yummy. Hashtag Jacobi. Davis Williams, how long do you fry them for? Just until they're golden brown. So, just about five to eight minutes. Just frying requires constant attention so when you're frying you just look at what you're doing you can't walk away from it okay guys so we are now going to patricia brown lol i need a house close by too <laughs> my sis you're welcome so we just have some fresh scallions here for a garnish and then I'm gonna cut our grilled vegetables up so it's easier to eat with a fork.
You can also grill the red cabbage. You can grill any vegetables. Okay, so for plating, I'm putting them into my plate over here. Let's put the carrots down. You want to give them a close-up of the plating, guys. All right, and then what I like to do is, remember I said I like to season? This is a vinegar. This is made with apples. It looks like balsamic, but it's actually apples. And this is a flavored oil. I put pimento, orange peel, cinnamon, and garlic. Just a little bit of garlic in this oil. All right, so it takes on some flavor. And then finally, I put a little bit more of the adobo on just to make sure there's seasoning in every single bite of it. Do you want to taste it? Avis Williams, the fastest way to fry plantain is to walk away, not burn up fast. <laughs> yes. So plantain likes to just burn. You know why? Because it has all of those sugars in it. Lisa, remember the cork head shift. I took them out the stove. We're done with the frying. The croquettes are done. Shana Case Michael, did you blanch the cabbage first or just grill it raw? Just grill it as is. If you blanch it first, Shauna is going to overcook. All right. We don't blanch it. Let's put some more vinegar on. I love this vinegar. It has a perfect balance of acidity and sweetness. And then we're gonna come in now. Less than one minute remaining, Chef. All right, guys, on Instagram, we are going to have to save the live. So we're gonna start afresh for you guys.